For those of you joining, uh, we have John Stein, CEO and founder of Betterment, and hello, and uh, Ken Lin, CEO and founder of Credit Karma. So uh, really what? excited to be having this conversation with you guys today, and it's such an important time. Um, I'm going to spend, uh, my name's Kristen Berman, by the way, I'm uh, co-founder of Common Sense Lab, which is the Duke University financial decision-making lab, and also uh, Irrational Labs, which is a behavioral economics uh, product design company founded with Dan Ariely. So I think a lot about behavior change and obviously the times are changing. So we're gonna, I'm gonna set some context for this conversation and then John and Ken will each have about five minutes to kind of share what's been going on in their companies and how they're thinking about um, behavior change at this time. Uh, so just to set some scene, I think, um, you know, even though an unemployment was doing really well before COVID, uh, people were struggling, right? So expenses were higher than income. Um, and now we're at a point in time when unemployment is kind of unimaginable. I think the latest reports say it's around 16% uh, or will get up to 16% across uh, the US. And so um, really the financial outlook for most Americans is changing, whether you have assets in betterment or you're struggling to pay your credit card right now. So the question for us today is um, in that context, what will people do? Um, and I'm going to add two, before we begin, two um, general tidbits or insights about behavior change here. Um, and I think they're actually quite uplifting because they talk about what could be possible. Um, one is called the hurricane effect. Uh, the hurricane effect is something that happens um, after a hurricane, which is people tend to buy insurance. Now, this is the exact wrong time for people to buy insurance. When should people buy insurance? They should buy it before the hurricane. And yet uh, it's very difficult for us to prepare for even something like a hurricane. Um, so we end up doing good behaviors, but potentially at the wrong time. And so when we think about COVID and what it could do, it actually could open up a possibility of people having, uh, seeing basically what could happen uh, and maybe starting some better financial behaviors. And the second insight is that habit change is also incredibly difficult. Um, you know, the definition of a habit is that it's an unconscious behavior that we do uh, on a regular basis. Um, and so the kind of the current, um, you know, um, thought on this is that if you just had enough willpower, you could change your habits. And in reality, this is this is just not correct. Research uh, has shown that there is one time that you can change habits most effectively. Um, and this is after uh, you move locations. So if you move locations from one uh, home to another home, you're more likely to change a habit. Um, and this is because we break our environment. And so this is another uplifting fact about the times that we're in is that people are actually changing their routines. While they haven't actually physically moved an environment, most of us have completely disrupted our routine. And so while kind of COVID starts with this uh, really sad financial picture for most Americans, it's actually an interesting point in time for us to think about behavior change in general. Um, we have you know, the hurricane effect and we also have habit change. And so with that, I'm going to ask John and Ken basically uh, each to talk for about five minutes on um, you know, what they've been experiencing at their respective companies um, and how they've seen consumer behavior change in these fairly interesting times. Great. Um, let's, uh, let's kick off with John. Great. Thanks, Kristen, for that great intro and some of those up uplifting stats. Um, it's good to hear uh, in, in the context that we're all experiencing. So I'm John Stein. I'm the founder and CEO of Betterment. Betterment is a smart money manager. We take all the things that a great financial advisor might do for you, and we make them smarter, faster, cheaper, and better for our customers. And uh, that might include things like optimizing around your taxes, providing advice across your cash and your investments, and essentially, helping you live a happier life. Um, I founded the company back in 2010 with the mission to empower people to do what's best for their money so they can live better. And we've been pursuing that through a bunch of launches over the last uh, many years. Um, in many ways, this current environment is kind of what we were founded for. Um, not that we hoped it would happen, but that we knew it would happen. We were founded, um, I founded the company coming out of the 2008 financial crisis at a time when everyone said, don't start a financial services company. That's a terrible idea. And, uh, and, and maybe they were right. I, I guess um, it's, 
uh, I knew it would be a challenge, um, but I saw then that people needed financial advice more than ever before. And I've, 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 I've been long advice. I'm, I continue to be long advice. I think we're just in the early phases of an industry transformation that we've seen around people moving toward getting more financial advice. We've seen some of the big discount brokers that maybe offered a little bit less advice be acquired by other firms that had more of an advice uh, focused uh, 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 offer. And I'm thinking of TD Ameritrade and E-Trade. Um, so uh, being acquired. I, I think we're just in the early stages and I think the, the forefront of it next is in, uh, is in banking. Uh, and we are, uh, we've been moving in the past couple of years toward providing more and more advice around your everyday checking, savings, and how that transitions into your long-term uh, investing and retirement plans. How do we help make the most of every dollar, help, help people make better financial decisions about what to do with that stimulus check that they're receiving or what to do uh, as regards to the CARES Act, things that impact us in the now, not just the long term. And so it's been uh, uh, interesting in this time to lean into to those, uh, those moves that we made and, and see, uh, see traction in them. And just a couple of stats, and then I'll, I'll hand it off to, uh, to Ken to do an intro. I, um, we saw uh, um, uh, a 25% jump in uh, net new investment accounts uh, created in Q1 2020 over Q1 2019. We've actually seen an increase uh, in the number of net accounts. Even in March, the worst month, we're adding a lot of net new customers. And in my view, it's kind of building on what you said, Kristen, that maybe some people are forming a new habit or using this as a time to take stock and do some things they've been meaning to do. I think our model of goal-based, smart, you know, long-term advice uh, is resonating in this time. And although people said for, for years and years, for, for the last decade, um, watch out for the downturn betterment because, you know, this whole thing that you're doing of, you know, um, robo advice or you know whatever like boy you're gonna have trouble like when people want to call well, we've seen some upticks in call volumes we can go into it later but you know um, you know it's all sustainable and we're net seeing uh, more customers depositing and withdrawing and a lot of new new ads so I'll, I'll end it there that's great thank you so much um, and and Ken um, do you want to start your five minutes sure sure so uh... Thanks, thanks for uh, hosting us and, and great to be here. Um, so, you know, we, we started Credit Karma in 2007, right before, uh, the, you know, the, the last uh, major recession. And, you know, a couple of, of things that we've learned throughout all of this is that, you know, one is that consumers historically do have a lot of bad financial happens to your point about the hurricane effect. We think this will be a major opportunity uh, to, to go and to, to change that, to fix that. Um, you know, and, and what we found in, in FinTech is that um, the industry can be the great equalizer in terms of the haves and have nots, right? If you think about where a lot of the most vulnerable, most sort of disadvantaged people are, are people who don't have access to financial services. And that's always been um, our stance at Credit Karma is helping, um, you know, a, a great class, 100 million Americans today uh, make progress on their finances. And we've seen a couple of trends, you know, I, I think over the course of the last three months, I think about it in three phases. Uh, so the first phase was the panic phase of what is going on. I think there was a first, you know, concern for uh, everyone in terms of their health, their family, their loved ones. And what we saw out of that was, um, you know, the panic of doing research when it came to financial services. So we saw a quick shift in people um, de-emphasizing credit cards and looking more into personal loans, looking more into mortgages. Uh, now, that obviously was an effect of um, the lower mortgage rates, but the note being that people patterns instantly changed in terms of what they were looking for, what they were searching for, what they were researching. Um, I think we're kind of in the second phase now, which is really the, you know, shelter in place and people getting settled with the new normal, which is working from offices and, and home offices and uh, being an environment that we're having and having virtual conferences. And what we're seeing now is, you know, certainly a decrease in the overall um, demand for specifically financial services products. We're seeing a lot of decreases in inquiries across the board. Um, the only outliers here from our perspective is gonna be around mortgages. And again, those rates are really high. Uh, I'm sorry, those rates are really low. The demand is really high. Call volume is through the roof. There aren't enough appraisers out there to uh, inspect homes, look at homes. You're seeing that particular industry uh, being you know, 
sort of hit with a wave of demand. Uh, and we're also seeing savings rates continue to dindle. Um, so if you look at our savings account, we've seen a sort of, you know, a, a withdrawal of cash, which makes sense as people think through being shelter at home for the next, uh, you know, two months or so. Uh, we think the third wave is going to hit soon, which is a realization in the sort of the reemergence phase, which I think to your point is the real opportunity. Um, in that reemergence phase, I think people will realize, oh my gosh, for the last two months I've been uh, without income. And when you look at some of the data, a quarter of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Almost half Americans don't have $400 in savings. And when you put that in context to, you know, eight weeks, 12 weeks of not working, not having income, that creates a real problem. And our hope, our aspiration through all this is a little bit of the realization of the value um, of planning, the value and importance of having a nest egg for your savings. And we really hope that those financial habits do change in this new normal. And, you know, if nothing else, this is a lesson for all of us of um, how these things happen from an unexpected perspective and being prepared is, you know, so valuable and so important. Great. Um, maybe let's use that as a jumping off point. So kind of given the um, tough state of financial stability in America right now, um, what are what are you guys doing to to help consumers? So what actions have has Credit Karma or Betterment taken to either give guidance or um, help in these tough times? I can go first. I mean, um, you know, over the last uh, three or four weeks, we've really rallied um, the company around this reemergent stage. And I think the shelter in place is the first thing. And then people, again, get used to the new normal. Uh, but we think there's a moment when start, people start coming out of their homes and um, and are really going to be distressed from a financial perspective. And while there are a ton of great programs from both the government, state, local, as well as private sector, it's really hard to understand uh, which programs you qualify for. It's really hard to weed through all of um, the complexities of it. So, you know, for, for, for the last 10 years of Credit Credit Card, we've been really building out this notion of financial identity and understanding, you know, the, the various aspects of a, a consumer's financial life, whether it's how much they owe or how much they have in savings, how much they're putting into an nest egg. And we think this is an opportunity for us to actually leverage our platform. So, you know, as consumers uh, look through all these programs, we can actually identify which programs they qualify for. For example, in San Francisco, uh, there are uh, moratoriums on ev eviction. So we can quickly note that somebody lives in San Francisco and notify them that, uh, you know, they will not be kicked out of their home. Similarly, as private companies have uh, deferment and, you know, um, debt forgiveness programs, we can actually tell that you have a trade line in Bank X and notify them. So instead of having to weed through uh, two or 300 or, you know, even thousands of small programs, we can actually notify them proactively of which programs they qualify for. Again, I think those are important areas where, you know, platforms like ours can really step up and do something different and, and really help the consumers who are really going to need it. Yeah, that's incredibly important. Um, I just went through the unemployment flow. If you were to uh, apply for unemployment and um, it took close to an hour and was incredibly confusing with only about one mention of Corona. This is, by the way, just for California. Uh, we haven't done we haven't done all states, but we can probably expect that that kind of help and assistance to navigate uh, assistance will be incredibly valuable. Um, John, what, what's Betterman up to? So. Much of uh, what we are seeing in the markets now is what we've at Betterment have been purpose built for, uh, and uh, and so in in some sense, like just just the algorithm continues doing the thing that it's doing. So we've harvested a lot of tax losses for our customers. Uh, we've rebalanced customer portfolios tax efficiently, smartly. Uh, helping them take advantage of volatility, buying on, on dips effectively, um, and uh, and making the most of this environment. Um, we've traded something close to ten billion dollars uh, over uh, over the last month or so, and um, uh, and that is all free, of course, for our customers um, and uh, and and to their benefit uh, uh, generally and on average and over the long term. So we. Um, you know, we do some things in specific in, in reaction to market downturns like this. Um, we uh, uh, and some other things are just kind of standard. So um, in specific, we uh, we publish some content. Uh, we put out more webinars. Uh, last week, we did our first office hours with um, our investing and advice team where anyone could could dial in any of our customers 
uh, and we, you know, uh, we actually had really great engagement and uh, I think hundreds of, of uh, people and questions, you know, being asked of, of our uh, investing experts. Um, most of the time um, when we message customers, they say they want more of this market commentary, but then we find like, you know, people get busy and when like the world isn't sort of like melting down, they go back to their normal lives and like they don't actually read it or, or uh, and there's not a lot they can do with it because very often the message is stay the course, invest for your goals. It's the same way that we set your account up in the beginning. And unless your life has totally changed and, and maybe you've lost your job and then we sort of like we can readjust. But even then, like, you know, as long as we expect you're going to get another job at some point, you've got your safety net set up with Betterment. You're drawing down on that, not on your retirement. Um, in this context, there have been a couple of other things like the CARES Act has come through. So we've been giving a lot of employers and uh, through our Betterment for Business, uh, our 401k platform, we've been giving a lot of employers uh, and their teams advice about how those with um, you, uh, with 401ks can draw down up to $100,000 of that 401k balance without penalty. So that helps people maybe smooth out the, the, the dip in income uh, from a, a loss of a job or, uh, or otherwise. Um, and, uh, and, and we've, uh, we've seen, um, you know, I think positively uh, customers react to this stay of the course, you know, consistent messaging by doing exactly that. Um, we've seen less than uh, a 2% increase in the number of withdrawals across the entire platform, investing, savings, checking, et cetera. Um, much of what we have seen in terms of withdrawals has been around, um, uh, you know, just kind of like, I need this money um, and I need it, you know, for something today. Uh, we've seen a little bit more of that. Um, we saw um, more customers depositing, though, than, than withdrawing. 26% uh, more customers have made a deposit than a withdrawal in, just in March. Uh, and if you look at just millennials, who you would expect to have a longer-term time horizon, it's been 37% of those millennials uh, have been uh, more have been depositing than, than withdrawing. So the same kinds wow. of consistent trends you, you'd expect over time. Yeah, I think uh, one of the deep curiosities I've had is if uh, the risk score or the risk questionnaire that you take, you know, before you do a uh, a robo advisor or an advisor actually correlates with our behavior during, you know, during a shock. Uh, and it seems like, and, and maybe you have different data, but if people are not withdrawing, then there's something interesting here is if you answer the risk questionnaire that you, you know, are risk averse or aren't risk averse, that maybe that doesn't have as much influence on our actual behavior is just your platform or um, in, in general uh, guidance in the market. Yeah, just on that, we do so much. I mean, you you probably, uh, you you know, Dan Egan, our, our head of uh, behavioral economics. I know, Kristen, you, you guys have uh, uh, have crossed paths. And um, we, um, uh, we've invested a lot in the years over this like smart behavioral advice throughout the app. So we don't show you on the homepage. Here's what the market did today. And it's in green if it's up and if it's, and it's red if it's in down, like most of our competitors do, right? Because most of our competitors want you to trade. They want you to do the bad thing for you, the good thing for them. That's how they make money, whether it's through commission or through payment for order flow or whatever. They want you to trade. We want you to make more money. And so we don't want you to trade. Uh, we want you to, we'll smartly rebalance for you. Don't worry about it. Just auto deposit. Uh, and so the way we've built the app uh, is in the signals that we're using are better for customers. And I think that that adds to this sense of stability in, in times like this. It's not like, you know, nobody is be behaving badly. We still, we saw something like a 50% increase in call volumes, which is not necessarily bad behavior. That's just like, I'm worried. I want to talk to someone about this. What should they do? But since that was early March, um, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, late March, uh, since uh, in the last couple of weeks, since the start of April, we've seen a return to normal call volumes. People have really kind of like mellowed out. Uh, and so I'm happy to happy to see that as well. That's great. Um, switching gears a little bit. Uh, Ken, so, um, you know, we're in a new world. Um, one opportunity for, for all of fintech, but in general as well, is to think about what are the market opportunities or what are the interesting things that we should be thinking about now to help people recover. Um, so would love your, your thoughts on kind of how we should be thinking ahead at this point um, for, for what, what we can be doing. Yeah, I mean, so if you think about what Credit Karma has been doing over the last 10 years, we've noticed this idea, um, three core concepts, and I think you actually hit on one of them, uh, you know, that one being simplicity. We think that financial services should be 
way more simple than it is and technology hasn't moved and kept pace and finance is more than other industries. And I think your note um, around unemployment claims is a great one in terms of how archaic that process is. And we think we can um, you know, improve that process. Um, the next one is really around the, the transparency side of it. So we've spent a lot of time focusing on how do we actually make things more transparent. And I would double click here a little because I think this is a big opportunity. You know, one of the great things in all of, uh, of the financial services is the, the aspect of credit and how powerful it's been in helping people balance out their future income and their current income. Um, but what we've also noticed is that what we are moving into and one of the things that credit does not predict is your ability to pay. And I think that's going to be a big opportunity. It's one of the things that we've been focused on at Credit Karma is really to understand your full financial profile. So not just your credit score, but your ability to pay. And I think that's more powerful now more than ever. In the context that if you think about what happened with COVID, you know, the economy and the fundamentals were pretty strong prior to, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, sort of the virus. And the challenge here is everyone that was eligible to lend uh, or borrow, you know, um, two months ago, uh, it, uh, provided that they're still employed, are, you know, technically still eligible. The challenge is you don't know who that 17, 18, 19 percent of unemployment are, and, and that is a challenge for most of the banks. And I think this is an opportunity for the economy to learn. It's an it's an opportunity for us to improve the technology to understand what are the true financial profiles of consumers who are the most eligible lenders, and how do you ensure that you don't and unlock you don't freeze the credit system, and how do you um, you know sort of unstick it from a perspective of getting the banks to lend, which would then power the economy, which sort of creates and move the flywheel again, which I think is a sad state. Is, you know, I think banks are really frozen up because they don't know which of the 17, 18, 19 percent of unemployment um, any given user is. And the more that you can figure that out, um, I think the more that you can quickly recover from this. And I, I think that's the challenge at hand. Yeah, this this does really kind of expose the hole in, in credit evaluation is that we're not looking at any of these triggers like cash flow or any actual things that would predict uh, repayment, not that FICO doesn't help, but uh, there is a, a big opportunity to, to change the credit market and evaluation um, as we think about moving forward. That's right. Um, great. And so any other, so, you know, we, I, I love kind of behavioral insights where this is a massive time for behavior change. Um, any other behavioral or insights or surprising things that have happened either um, you know, from your own team and how they're reacting to, um, you know, to how the market is reacting to you guys or just general customer behavior changes. Um, we only have a couple minutes left, so I kind of want to pull out any other interesting facts that we may have missed over the, the last 30 minutes. I'll add one. Um, in, all, in all markets, um, we have a feature called uh, Tax Impact Preview that if you go to make a transfer or withdrawal, um, it, it tells you what's the likely tax impact of that transaction. This is a, a betterment, you know, unique feature as far as I know. Uh, again, because we, we want to you know, not have tax impact and to avoid trading, whereas others don't, don't, they want you to go through with the trade and you know, don't care about your taxes. So um, normally 75% um, of customers who see that um, don't go through with the transaction after seeing that there's a taxable impact. So that's just kind of like an all the time like regulator. And in this time, um, we have added to that, um, you know, some language around, are you worried about a market downturn, right? Just sort of like putting the question into the technology. And if you say, no, I need this for the down payment on my house, like we're, we finally got that mortgage from Credit Karma, here we go. Like um, you can, uh, uh, you know, that, that's the normal flow, but if you say yes, then we'll show you some more resources about like, you know, how you should think about this and, you know, goal based investing and that like, you know, uh, we have a new article that show out that shows um, the performance of the betterment portfolio over each of the last 15 years net and like the, the largest drawdown in that time. And it's just fascinating that in almost every year there was a pretty significant 10 plus percent drawdown, oftentimes, you know, 15 or 20. Uh, and yet, you know, for the year. Uh, you were net positive. And that doesn't hold every year, but it's like, it's pretty amazing to look back mm -hmm. over the last 15 years at a globally diversified portfolio and how that has performed. Um, so that's just a couple of tidbits. That's great. Um, yeah, and maybe for ours, uh, one, I love you know, our economics and, 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 you know, sort of love all the books on it. Um, I, you know, I think we'll do a small one on priming. So for us, um, 
it's a simple idea, right? So just priming the savings rate, for example, of the default of how much do you want to save, how much do you want to create a recurring deposit. So those are two features that we added. One, it was getting people in the habit and making that simple. So whether it's saving $5 a week, $20 you know, a month, um, when you make that easy, you can create the habit formation more quickly. Um, but something as simple as the default input of whether you put $1, $5, or $10 also has a huge impact. And you know, what I noted, it's, all, it's always those small little triggers that make a huge difference. In the end, it's cumulative, it's habit formation, but when you do those things well, you can make a big impact in people's lives. And I think this is the time for it to hopefully stick a little bit more. It's around, uh, you know, those changes in life events where you realize that, my gosh, I should be better prepared in the future for these types of events. And hopefully we can get more consumers to stick on these. Yep, for sure. And then Ken, one, this is another curiosity of, of I've had in general is, um, are people checking their score more? And, and you may not know the latest, but but this is kind of just like you'd be logging in to check your portfolio. Are we logging in more to see the credit score and if it's going up or down? Um, I'm going to tell you my hypothesis first. Can I do that? Okay. Just sure. me? Okay. So um, typically we don't like bad news. So if you were to gain weight, you step on the scale less. So I'm I'm thinking that people are actually not checking their score as much. That's my hypothesis. Yeah, I mean, this is probably where you have the uh, the economist sort of up arrow, down arrow, and then sort of net effect. I think you're right from that perspective. Um, so that's the down. I think people want to look less. The up is people have more time at home, right? So they have, um, so, so we see both impacts. Uh, so we certainly see it from social, like, I don't want to hear about my score right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, but we also see stronger engagement on credit karma. And I, I think that's a byproduct of the fact that people are at home, they have you know, know where to go and it's something that they should look at. And we do see people doing research on sort of the next stage of what happens. Great. Um, and I think with that, we're at time. Um, so unless you guys have any final comments, um, I really appreciate uh, uh, spending this 30 minutes with you and getting to better understand customer behavior. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you.